You're going to read it of Mark 16 and 6. And let's see just what the word of God has to say and break it up real good and look at it and see what God is speaking over this particular chapter in Scripture in terms of the word of God. Word of God, chapter, six, chapter 16 6. And he saith unto them, Be not affrightened. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. Hmm. Behold the place where they laid him. Look and see that not what he told you in, in, in when he was here on earth, that when he lied, when he died on, that he going to raise up in three days. He said, look and see. Stick your head in there and see. And they stuck their head and they saw just what the angel said. Guess what they did? They, they, couldn't, they couldn't hold their mouth. They couldn't, they, they, couldn't, they couldn't breathe. And they got in the seventh verse and they say, but he said, but then, what did he say in the seventh verse? But go your way and tell who? The disciples. Because they gave, you see, they was already whipping and crying and feeling bad for what happened in the Garden of Gethsemane because of the guilt that was on them because they left their Messiah straight alone. People will leave you. They say they love you and they will leave you. They'll walk out on you. They'll, I'm telling you, they hit the road, Jack, and they won't come back no more, no more, no more. They'll hit the road on you. In the Garden of Gethsemane, when the high priest from Cephas them came to, to actually cuff Jesus and take him out of there, the, the disciples took off like I said. The only one who stood there and fought was Peter. Peter was a warrior. He's the only one who took a butch knife to the prayer meeting. And he took that butch knife off. He slain the ear of that high priest. And Jesus, in the midst of them taking him over to Cephas, the high priest, told the man, look, put the knife away, Peter. Those who live by it will die by it. You don't need that because I have told you once again, Peter, also that in three days I'll be handed over the son of man, but I'll rise up and I'll, come, I'll defeat the last death. And that is yeah. going to be death. That'll be my last battle is going to be death. The word of God says over the seventh verse, but, 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 but go your way and tell your disciples and Peter that he go up before you into Galilee. There should you see him as he said unto you, as he said unto you. Over and over again, Christ is telling them, even in the midst, he said, I'm prophesying even after my death. That, that's stunning right there when you look at just the verse right there. He said, go your way. The angel said, go your way. And he's going to see him in Galilee just as he told you when he was living. Christ told him you'll see him again in Galilee. He prophesied. He wasn't even dead yet. He told him you'll see him again. Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. That ought to tell you something right there. Come on, woman of God. Come on. You, you, you got to elaborate on this. Amen. I was I was just thinking back at when they first came to the the tomb. They probably had in their mind of how it was going to be, but when Jesus told them ahead of time what was going to happen. Amen. Amen. But sometimes we need to to actually see yeah, to believe. That's bad too. I mean, that's, and that is bad. and it's amazing how when they came to to the tomb, they had in their mind what the, what they were, were going to see. But then they were talking ahead of time, well, who, who's going to move this great stone? Amen. Because when, they, when the tomb is in, in, encased and a stone is put in, in front of it, it's not just easily moved. Uh -huh. But when they came to it, it, it was completely moved. And sometimes we did, this was such an incredible miracle that we see what happened, that the stone was gone. And... Then we have someone that was inside of it, one of the, the angels of the Lord saying, I need you to now give the word to the people. You didn't believe me at first, but now I need you to give, I need you to give this, this word to the people that this miracle did take place. So they come in there, they're, they're not really knowing what to expect. And they see they were, they were scared when they went into the tomb and they they were like who who moved the stone but with with god it's you know there was a, there was something that took place and that was it was going to to be done where we're going to have the savior come and that was going to to save us well we see such an amazing time d during this time we such see such an amazing miracle take place that even the people that walk side by side with Jesus didn't didn't know truly know until this happened, and they saw this miracle take place. This this large stone moved out of the way, and they were expecting 
to see Jesus in there. They had taken the spices. They were going to anoint him. But then where was Jesus? The angel of the Lord was, was, sh was telling him just exactly, tell Peter, tell the disciples that he's gone on to, to Galilee. So this is such a significant time. Um, today is such a significant moment that we have the Son of God being raised. And these were, everything was, was, was planned. Everything that took place, it was very, very significant. Every moment was significant. But especially this one that they were in their minds expecting to see Jesus there. But Jesus did say that I'm going to raise. I'm going to be risen on the third day. Wow. Well, uh, you know, you know, El and um, I think a little bit First Peter, uh, woman of God. I mean, First Peter 18 uh, that uh, Christ also suffered once for our sins. You know, it talks about the process how uh, we just kind of you know uh, we we know. That what already took place, it took place is for the remission of our sins. Amen. You know, we, 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 we're in there if we believe. The Bible says that, uh, according to First Peter, I think at First Peter three eighteen and nineteen. I want to look at something here. As I touched that, it says that for Christ also suffered once for sins. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Once for sins, he only suffered once for sins. You know, you know. Bible said he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. Just time his peace was upon us. You know, by his stripes we were healed. I mean, he only went through that once. He didn't have to go through it twice. He he wasn't redundant in what he was doing. Amen. The Bible says also, you know, as it says once again, First Peter three and eighteen and nineteen. For Christ also suffered once for our sins, the righteousness for the unrighteousness notice what he's saying suffer once for the righteousness this is how he said for the unrighteousness listen to me ladies and gentlemen when you read that scripture very carefully notice how it says he that said that for the righteousness for the right he died for also the sinners also that they will all have the right to the tree of life this is such a powerful event when we think about it. The Bible says he looked beyond our sins. Beforehand, the book of Jeremiah talks about it one to five, before we was even prepared and engineered and put together and structured together in our mother's womb. He knew that we would have some falls. Notice how he said in 1 Peter 3 and 18, the 19 verse. This is in the uh, the, the international version. I'm going to look at it in the actual um, the ES, the ESV version. You know, the English Standard Version. I'm going to look at the English Standard Version. Look how he says it. For Christ also suffered once for sins. The righteousness for the unrighteousness. That he might bring us to God. Being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. Look at the 19th verse. In which he went to proclaim to the spirit in prison. It, it, did somebody catch that? In other words, I'm the advocate for the very sin that's holding you, that spiritual sin that's holding you. In other words, I'm going to come to pull you out of whatever it is that you're in. Notice, let's look at it again in the 19th verse, in which he went to proclaim. I'm going to be the person, I'm, I'm going to be the defense attorney for the persecutor that's coming against you, which is the devil, mm -hmm. to proclaim to the spirit in prison. Let me show you something. Can, can I? Can we talk here a little bit? Yeah, no, can we talk? Let, let's look. At, let's now think about this and putting in those in First Peter, three eighteen and nineteen, and what Christ is saying in the English Standard Version. Let Let me take you somewhere. Take your Bibles and go with me, and I'm gonna prove to you that when people are always look at and think they're a little bit better than you are, and and that's that's a that's a thing. That's a problem. Even when you was a being a pastor or a leader, you are not thinking yourself of being something that you're not. Because Christ has gave everybody the right to be redeemed from the curse of the law, which is the curse that's coming against them. Now, look at this strong, and let's go over here to the book of Ephesians. Y'all y'all know where I'm at up in here. Let's look at the book of Ephesians, and let's go to the book of Ephesians, and let's go down there to chapter 2 in the book of Ephesians. Let me get there with you guys. Let me turn some pages with you guys and get over with you. Ephesians chapter 2. I'm going to get there quickly before you get time. We've got about 24 minutes left on the show. I'm going to get there quickly. Ephesians chapter 2. Let me show we're here. Uh, chapter 2. Now, let's look at Ephesians chapter 2. Come on, woman of God. You want to you take that? For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if you had heard 
of the disp- dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me. Okay, to let's back. Work. Let's back up. Let's back up. Let's back up. Let's go to the book of Ephesians, chapter two. Is that where we are? But he has quickened who are dead in the trespass. Okay. That's the other. Because we want to line this up what we're talking about over in Peter. How he came to pull the spirit which is already in you to have success in the vision to give you out of the prison in which the world is trying to hold you in. See, Ephesians shows us that we were all in prison in our spiritual life, but Christ died on the cross to free us from the law that held us captive by our ways and our deeds and our doings when we were young. You, you want, you, can I get you? You want to go ahead with it? Yes. Come on. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world. Wow. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Among him, among whom also we had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling mm-hmm. the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and by nature the children of wrath because of others. Wow. Wow. All tore up from the floor. All jacked up. We were all messed up. And this is why he says over in, when you look at First Peter 3 and 18, for Christ suffered. Suffered what? The marks and the stripes he took. Isaiah 53, the wounding. For we looked before our sins. That he know if he wouldn't have went to the cross, he had to be the new Adam to bring us out of what we were in. In my end, up with anybody. Y'all catching me? Amen. I'm trying to get you to see something. You were in prison, but Christ had a key. And that was the death on the cross to bring you out of whatever proclivity that's in your life. The Bible declared the decree that he suffered once for the very sins. He had the master key to lock any lock, to unlock any lock that Satan had on your life. The Bible said before he descended, he ascended. I hear a lot of preachers say he went down to hell and kicked the bottom out of hell. And he preached in hell to the ones who didn't have an opportunity to hear him when he was in the live, knowing that there was a Messiah going to come. So he went down and spoke to them to say the Spirit was released. And as the Spirit was released, they went out witnessing about that when they had a chance to live that they didn't hear. And now Christ has released them, took the keys out of Satan's hand, knocked him out. Amen. And snatch the keys. And the Bible declared that they were, we was all in prison in our spirit, not knowing where we would go and what we would be in the time of our sins. Notice what he said in First Peter 3 and 18. He said, For Christ also suffered once for sins of the righteousness for the righteous, that we might bring to us and bring and put to death the flesh which was made alive in the spirit. And that's what he said. Put the put what did he say? Put the death the flesh. Which is made alive in spirit. She just read it over in the book. If you don't, if you don't catch it, you need to go back and read what she just read in the book of Ephesians. Because she just told you. The Bible declared that you were quickening and just passing your sin. You were in sin, every one of us. According to the book of Romans, over there, Romans, what's that? Romans 3, 10 through 11. He said, there's not one right. Not one of us are right. Amen. But according to Romans 3 and 23, he said, we all fall short. But I believe Christ said as an advocate. Amen. Then he went to the cross and he laid down on a Friday afternoon. Am I in there? They say when he rose up early Sunday morning, not even believe when Mary Magdalene and her friends came to the cross, wonder about who gonna move the stone back. But Jesus said, "You must didn't hear me when I told you. I prophesied this beforehand that I'm gonna get up. That when I get up, I have all power just in the palm of my hand." Mm-hmm. The word of God declared that even when Jesus was even on earth, we all had a process of having trespasses and sins in our life, according to Ephesians chapter two. That we're in past times, we all walk to the course of the world according to the prince of the power of the air, of the mm-hmm. spirit that walketh in the children of this. We were all disobedient. We all are still disobedient right now. We all going through something in life. Is that one right? Not one right. But Christ has given us the opportunity to have the right to the tree of life. That what he done on this particular day, that when he laid down, that when he get up, he said, I have all power in the palm of my hand. I'm going to release the very prisons of your spirit that you may be free. And who the son sets free is free indeed. Amen. I got to get up out of here because Christ is trying to tell you something. This is a day to remember Amen. that it was by the grace that you are saved. The word declares and decrees that among, in the third, in the third verse of Ephesians 2, he said, among who will also have conversations in past times, fulfilling the lust and the desires of the flesh, of the mind, whereby natures of children, we are all, we were all children of wrath, even as others were. Ain't nobody perfect. I heard the man of God. 